As you are able, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Ash Wednesday the beginning of the season of Lent. I'm sure you noticed that today is also Valentine's Day, right? So, well, thanks for bringing your date to worship tonight. (laughs) In one way, this could be a win-win for the consumers of greeting cards. You know, roses are red, violets are blue, Lent is beginning, no chocolate for you. (laughs) Or... How about, won't you be my valentine, you miserable sinner? (laughs) Or how about this? This is my favorite. What? So what are you doing for Valentine's Day? Rubbing dirt on people's faces and telling them they're going to die. (laughs) What? (laughs) So welcome to Ash Wednesday Valentine's. We gather together on this day, Ash Wednesday, we remember the story of God's deep, everlasting love for us. We remember that the history of salvation is one long, extended love story between God and God's creation, between God and humankind, between God and God's people. When we talk about love, true love, is there any love greater than the love that God has for the world? A love that is revealed through God's own Son, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross for the salvation of the world. Jesus himself said that there is no love greater than this, that someone who would lay down their life for someone else. And Jesus exemplifies that deep love. But like all God's people who have gone before us, we need to be reminded that this God who loves us so much, this God who created us, is also a God who continually invites us into a deeper relationship. God invites us to enter into the deep mystery of true love as we examine our lives, as we offer our confession for for ways that we have turned away from God or against God. And this opportunity then to enter into the possibility of real repentance, of transformation, 
of turning toward God. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, are the words that we hear on Ash Wednesday. They are a reminder of our mortality, a reminder that, that we as human beings, a reminder that with birth we have also received an expiration date. Dust and ashes. Symbols of mortality and also symbols of repentance. In my own faith journey, I have come to agree with preacher William Williman, who says, sometimes we Christians overlook the wonder that God not only convicts us of our sin, but also forgives us of our sin. Ash Wednesday is thus a grand occasion to remember not only that we should repent, but also that we can repent. We get to repent, for by the grace of God, there is not a God who is waiting for us to misstep and then that God is ready to zap us, but rather by the grace of God in Christ, we need not hold on to our sin, but we can be forgiven. We are forgiven. Again, it's not that we have to repent, but the joyous good news is that we can repent. We get to repent. And that there is a God who graciously and mercifully desires to forgive us and to restore us and to renew us. And that, my friends, is awesome good news. Just as the prophet Joel says, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Again, while this reminds us of our mortality, it also reminds us of the one who made us out of dust. It reminds us of the one who, who formed us out of dust, out of clay, just as a potter shapes and molds that clay forming that which the potter desires to create. So too, God created us. That creation story in Genesis chapter 2 speaks of the Lord fashioning the first human being and then breathing God's breath of life into his nostrils. God breathed life into the clay and the dust as God formed human beings. As that story continues, it didn't take long, though, before the first human creations of God turned inward and turned away from God. Thus, sin is a part of our history. Sin and brokenness are a part of our lives. And all of salvation history is one story after another of God reaching out to bring people back into relationship. That brokenness in our lives affects our relationship with God. That brokenness affects our relationship with each other. That brokenness affects our relationship with all of creation and even with our own selves. For we sometimes doubt God's love. We doubt that, that God could possibly love us. Sometimes we ask, can God still love me? Or in our relationship with others, we ask, is it possible that God could love that person or that group of people? Our brokenness is also evident in the trials and tribulations that we face. The hurt and pain we've endured or our griefs and losses that we've experienced. We experience it in loneliness and the feelings of unfulfill unfulfillment. We long for healing. And all we need to do is turn on the news to see the brokenness in our world. Sometimes our only prayer can be, Lord, have mercy and save us from ourselves. And yet God is the one who wants to bring healing and wholeness and restoration and newness. That's exactly 
what God is offering. It's what God desires to give. And in Psalm 51, that's attributed to King David, written as a prayer of contrition because of his own sin in his own life, those powerful words, create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a right spirit within me, cast me not away from your presence, take not your Holy Spirit from me, restore to me the joy of your salvation, sustain me with your bountiful spirit, cries the psalmist. Just tell me this isn't the prayers in our own hearts at one time or another. Indeed, create a clean heart within me, O God. Renew a right spirit. Cast me not away. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation. Sustain me with your bountiful spirit. God's creative power is not limited, though, to the initial creation of this world and everything in it. We are constantly in a state of flux, God moving and doing new things in and with our lives. God is always at the potter's wheel refining what has been made. But God also knows that we are broken and God desires to heal, restore, and renew. In Japanese art, there is a technique used in ceramic pottery called kintsugi which is literally translated as golden joinery, golden joinery. If a bowl or vase or other piece of pottery falls and breaks, Kintsugi is putting the pieces back together again, but instead of trying to hide the cracks, instead of trying to, to hide the brokenness, they are illuminated and highlighted by gold. The imperfections aren't hidden away or ignored. For we can't pretend we don't see the cracks. Likewise, God doesn't try to pretend that we don't have cracks or that we're broken and in need of healing and restoration. God, like the potter, can take something broken and make it new and make it maybe even more beautiful than ever. Not with gold, but with love and with forgiveness, and with mercy, God restores and renews us. God gives us second chances, and God calls us back into that close relationship that God has always wanted for us since the beginning. There's a story of a church that shows as its Lenten theme, 40 days of love, 40 days of love. And each week, members of the congregation were encouraged to show their love and appreciation in different ways. And the first week, they were encouraged to send notes to people, to send notes to, to, to people who may have had a positive influence or impact on their lives. And after that first service, a man in the congregation wanted to speak to the pastor saying, you know, I love you and I love this church, but I'm not going to participate in this 40 days of love stuff. It's okay for some folks, but it's just a little too sentimental and a little too syrupy for me. And so a week went by, and the next Sunday, this man waited after church to see his pastor again, and he said, I want to apologize for what I said on Sunday. I want to apologize about the 40 days of love. I realized on Wednesday that I was all wrong. Wednesday, his pastor said, what happened on Wednesday? I got one of those letters, he said. The letter came as a total surprise. It was from a person I never expected to hear from. And yet every time I read it, I get tears in my eyes. I was so moved by that letter that I sat down and wrote ten letters of my own. Love that renews, restores, and transforms and changes lives. That's what God's about, and that's what God's inviting us to. Perhaps this Ash Wednesday, Valentine's Day, is God's love letter to you. It's a message that invites 
you, me, invites us into this mystery and depth of God's love. This love will take us on a journey, a journey with Jesus, a journey to the cross, to the passionate life of God, shown in the passion of Christ all the way to the cross and to the resurrection. For it is here that the promise is revealed again and again and again, that nothing, no thing can ever separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And my friends, that's a love story and we're part of it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.